So in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at MiniWare's MDP modular power supply system. This is a really interesting and unique power supply with a lot of features you won't find anywhere else. For example, right now, this power supply is being powered over USB from a five volt power bank. And the voltage the power supply can output is up to 18 volts on a USB five volt power source. That is a really nifty trick. So let's get into the video and go over all the neat tricks this power supply offers. If you want the TLDR version, yes, I do recommend this power supply. The only drawback I found is the system, the menu system is a little bit clunky for changing things like voltage and current, but aside from that, I really have no complaints at all. So let's get into the video. Although compact, this power supply is capable of outputting 30 volts, 5 amps, or 90 watts, whatever comes first. The power supply module can be operated independently, or you can use a display module that connects wirelessly using a 2.4 GHz signal to communicate with up to six individual power supply modules. There are two power input options available, a USB Type-C and a DC barrel jack. This means you can use power banks and USB chargers to run the power supply. However, if you want to take full advantage of the maximum 90 watt output, then a power adapter or LiPo battery connected via the DC barrel jack will be your best option. The screen is powered via a micro USB port. You can power the screen from the power supply module using the included cable, or you can power the screen from a separate USB power source and use the display as a wireless remote to control the power supply module. Pretty cool stuff. The user interface is very easy to read and navigate. To change the voltage and current settings, two scroll wheels are used. One wheel selects the decimal place, while the other changes the value. Personally, I find this very slow and clunky compared to having dedicated voltage and current wheels, but that's just my opinion. Later in the video, we'll take an in-depth look at the power output on my oscilloscope, but first, a message from this video's sponsor. Here we have the rare and elusive mechatronic Neanderthal. To attract a mate, this young single male must construct a functioning circuit. Unfortunately for this young male, he isn't using a custom printed circuit board, so there is only one way this can end. Oh dear. Thankfully this won't happen to you, because you can order a custom printed circuit board from JLCPCB. Starting from as little as $2 for 5 PCBs, they have fast production time and offer a wide range of design options and colours to choose from. So why don't you try out JLC PCB for your next project. Inside the box is, well, more boxes. Inside I found the LCD monitor display module. Let's put that aside for a moment and take a look at the power supply module in the other box. On the side is a small display and controls which allow you to operate the power supply without the display module connected. Two gold plated banana sockets serve as your power output connection. Miniware also provide a nice set of gold plated hardware and silicon insulated wire leads. Nice stuff. Since this is a modular system, the display can be stacked on top of the power supply module and is loosely held in place with a magnet. Now let's talk power source options. I had an old laptop power adapter which also conveniently had the correct size jack on it. The screen displays output voltage and current settings. Below that we have the input voltage and current consumption and the temperature of the power supply module. At the bottom of the screen are six slots to connect up to six individual power supply modules, which can all be monitored from the display module. 
Let's move on to testing the output. I connected my meter's leads to the posts and programmed the output voltage at 5 volts. Taking a closer look at the power supply screen, the screen displays 4.995 volts, which is confirmed by my meter. This is really good stuff. The output voltage can be adjusted down to 1 millivolt increments, allowing for super fine adjustment. The input voltage from my power adapter is 19 volts. For most power supplies, this would mean the output voltage could not be higher than the input voltage. But this is not the case here. Even though the input voltage is 19 volts, the power supply can output its full voltage range of up to 30 volts. This means Miniware must be using a switching regulator which can operate in boost or buck mode. Switching regulators also typically have high efficiency, however the trade-off can be increased noise and ripple on the output. So I think it's time to break out the oscilloscope and take a closer look. I connected my scope probe up to the output terminals and programmed the power supply to output 5 volts. And honestly for a switching regulated power supply, I'm impressed with the low ripple. The peak to peak values come in at 16 millivolts, however most of that is high frequency stuff. The low frequency ripple is close to 6 millivolts peak to peak. Pretty good. However this isn't a real world test since no current has been consumed from the power supply. So next I connected my resistive load tester to the power supply terminals with around 1.2 amps of current being consumed by the load tester. As expected the ripple has gone up, however it's still very acceptable with the low frequency ripple coming in at around 10 millivolts, depending how you interpret the screen. On Miniware's product page they state the ripple is 3 millivolts peak to peak. Obviously the ripple I'm measuring is quite a bit higher than that. One possible explanation for the added ripple I'm measuring was the old laptop power adapter that I'm using to power the Miniware power supply. To eliminate this possibility, I made up an adapter cable using an XT60 and barrel connector to allow me to run the power supply from a LiPo battery, which is a super clean power source that won't add any extra ripple to the equation. And the results are in. The laptop adapter was indeed adding ripple to the equation. Comparing the two side by side, the difference is self evident. So, from here on in, all further tests will be done using the LiPo battery as a power source. Next, I reconnected my load tester. Drawing around 1.2 amps, the peak to peak noise has increased to 17 millivolts. However, the good news is the low frequency ripple is only around 4 millivolts peak to peak. This is really impressive results for such a compact switching power supply. Which raises the question, how have Miniware pulled this off? Well before we answer that question, let's do a couple more tests before popping the lid. Thus far all the tests have been conducted with the power supply in buck mode. To test boost mode, I'm raising the voltage up to 18 volts. The scope reveals nothing has changed really, still a relatively smooth power output. For my last test using the scope, I connected my load and drew the maximum current output of 5 amps. Much to my amazement, the scope revealed nothing really. The low frequency ripple was still around 4 millivolts peak to peak. This is great. Now at this point we've done a few tests on the power supply and we've got back some pretty impressive figures in terms of uh, low ripple values. But these numbers might not mean much to you on their own. So to give you some context of what Miniware has achieved in this tiny chassis, I'm going to bring in my Raiden power supply which I reviewed in a separate video. If you want to learn more about this there'll be a link in the corner. Now although these two power supplies are visually very different, not to mention their size is extraordinarily different as well, they do share a common thing and that's they're both switching regulated type power supplies. So we're going to perform the same load test drawing uh, about 5 amps and we're going to compare 
the ripple output from the Ryden to the Miniware power supply. First I connected my load tester to the Ryden and then my scope probe. To keep the playing field even, I programmed the power supply with the same values as the previous test with the Miniware. Taking a look at my oscilloscope's display, the ripple is high enough it doesn't even fit on the screen using the identical settings we were using during testing of the Miniware. I increased the volts per division to see the entire wave on the screen. The peak to peak ripple is over 400 millivolts with the low frequency ripple coming in at around 150 millivolts peak to peak. To put this into context, this means under the same test conditions, the Ryden power supply had over 37 times more low frequency ripple than the Miniware. So as you can see from that test, in terms of low frequency ripple, the Ryden is deep into three figure territory, while the tiny Miniware power supply is in the single digit class. How have Miniware pulled this off? Well to answer that, I think it's time to break out a screwdriver, pop the lid, and reveal what secrets Miniware have inside this tiny chassis. Three screws are hidden under the rubber feet. After removing them, the cover can be gently removed. Thermal paste has been applied to allow the alloy chassis to pull double duty acting as a heatsink for some of the internal PCB components. Two more screws are removed which allows the PCB to be gently lifted. Safe to say this PCB is jam packed with SMD components in what has to be one of the most densely populated boards I've ever seen with my own eyes. The large inductor is part of the switching regulator circuit along with capacitor banks to help smooth out the ripple. So there is a lot of stuff happening on that tiny circuit so for a simplified explanation we're going to be moving to the whiteboard. Now as you can see here I didn't attend art school and I'm okay with that but you'll have to put up with my crude drawing skills. So before we get into this uh, let's talk quickly about the pros and cons of the two most common types of power supplies you'll find. They are linear regulated and switching regulated power supplies. So the pros and cons of a switching regulated power supply are high conversion efficiency, should be in the 90% plus range, uh, and the drawback is you'll find a noisy output with the potential for lots of ripple, as we saw when we hooked up the Ryden power supply to my oscilloscope, there was lots of ripple. That's the pros and cons of switching regulated. Uh, so now moving on to linear regulated, it's kind of the opposite. Um, it has, in the wrong situation, extremely poor conversion efficiency, can waste lots of power as heat, uh, but the benefits are they typically put out very clean, smooth power. Now, Miniware have kind of come up with a hybrid system, which is what we're going to explain. So starting over here, we've got our power source. This might be a USB charger, um, it might be a, a power adapter, whatever, it doesn't matter. So we get our power from our power source and it goes to the input side of our Miniware power supply. Now, let's say on the output, I want 12 volts. So I program the Miniware power supply to output 12 volts exactly. So the first stage, we have the power gum from our input and it goes to the switching regulated side of the Miniware power supply. Now what the circuit does is it takes the input power and it looks at our programmed voltage and it converts the power to our programmed voltage plus half a volt or thereabouts. So the switching regulator would output 12.5 volts, half a volt higher than our program voltage. So the switching regulator does the bulk of the voltage conversion and it then sends the power out to the linear regulated side of the circuit. And the linear regulated side takes off that extra half a volt and would drop it down to our program voltage, which is 12 volts, and sends it to the output ready for use. Now what makes this system so good is the switching regulator gives us the benefit of high conversion efficiency and then the linear regulated side of the circuit 
cleans up the noisy output from the switching regulator and sends out nice smooth power ready to be used. It's absolute genius. Why hasn't someone done this before? Well, it's probably not groundbreaking, but I've never seen this before. It's absolutely brilliant. So really, Miniware have found a way to combine the best of both types of uh, power supplies and combine it into one so that you really get uh, the best of both worlds without compromising too much. So well done Miniware, this is a fantastically designed product with their usual top-notch build quality. So I think that draws us to the end of this video. If you want to buy one of these, then it would be great if you could use one of my affiliate links as it helps uh, support the content on my channel and you'll be seeing more videos just like this one. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.